I'm almost certain that there is at least one person watching this video and hyperventilating into a paper bag because they're like, oh my god, I want to apply to biomedical sciences and I don't have any work experience. Well, my friend, I sincerely hope that this video can put you at ease. So as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about a whole bunch of ways that you can get work experience if you're age 16 and 18. Now this video is mostly aimed at those of you guys who want to go and study biomedical sciences at university and kind of just want something to amp up your personal statement. But there are a couple of things I just need to get out of the way before I can get started with the bulk of the video. So the first thing is that a bunch of these things that I'm going to tell you also apply for things like biology, microbiology, um, physiology, pharmaceutical sciences, and a whole bunch of those kind of degrees. It's not just biomedical sciences. The second thing, and I know that it kind of makes the whole point of this video a little bit void, but I hope that it will put some of you at ease, is that Honestly, for biomedical sciences, you don't strictly need work experience. And the reason why I say this is because um, if you guys are following my channel, you know that I want to do um, graduate entry medicine. And medicine is very different to biomed. For medicine, you are literally required to do as much work experience as you can and get as much of a feel of the field as you possibly can. Biomedical sciences is a little bit different and while I think it is amazing to have work experience, especially if you want to get into some of the top unis, it isn't necessary. So if you think, oh my god, it's quite late and um, you know, I'm watching this video later, I just haven't had a chance to get a lot of work experience, Honestly, don't worry about it too much. Just do the best with what you can, or what you have, sorry. Okay, but all of that aside, let's assume that you do want to get work experience, not necessarily for your personal statement, but because, I don't know, maybe you just are interested and you want to do get, and you want to get some. So for you, you wonderful human, let's just get through a bunch of things I've got to share. So the first way of getting work experience for biomedical sciences is to go and do some shadowing or some observation at pathology labs. Now these are things like the haematology labs, microbiology labs, things like that in hospitals. The good thing about applying to your local hospitals, so for example ringing them up or going online, is that because you do get a lot of medicine students who want to do uh, like work experience placements, they often have like forms and protocols in place. So for example, if you go on your local hospital's website, if I mean, I'm sure they have one, um, and they may already have a form that says, you know, work experience student, and then you can write in that form that you're looking to just do pathology labs and just shadow like a microbiologist or shadow a biomedical scientist. If you can't find anything like this online, I would say ring them up. I have to say, it does take a lot of bravery. I know when I was 17, I found it really difficult to ring places up and be like, hi, I'm a student, I want to do medicine, please give me a place of work experience, please. So I know what it's like, but come on, be brave. If awkward 17 year old me could do it, I'm sure you can too. Number two is independent bodies that actually offer summer placements or placements uh, in between school holidays for you guys to go and get some experience. Now I have to say the majority of these I haven't actually heard of and when I was doing research to make this video I actually came across them and I've got the notes uh, on my laptop here so I might have to like just look over here while I talk to you about it. But honestly, some of these sound amazing and I really wish I knew about them when I was applying. So the first thing I came across is the new field or enough field research placements. Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. So basically, and I think this is amazing, it's an opportunity for A-level students to apply for a paid summer placement, which is quite rare, especially if you're an A-level student. And you get the opportunity to work alongside other scientists and um, professionals who are, you know, in universities and industries, as it says, and other research institutes. I will have all of these links below, by the way, because I'm just going to introduce them to you and you're more than welcome to go and do all of your own research. But yeah, when I read that, I was like, that's amazing. If, if you're, imagine if you're 16 to 18 and you want to go and do something like that. I don't know. I would have loved it. 
So the other summer placement that I found was something called Inside Science um, and as I've got written here it's for students in Suffolk and Norfolk so sorry if you guys aren't within those regions um, but basically what it is is or as it says the Norwich Biosciences Institute invites uh, gifted and talented pupils in year 11, 12 and 13 to spend three days on an intensive workshop hearing about the research they do at first hand that's really good you also get the opportunity to meet students postdocs research assistants and you get to speak to them about you know what their actual role consists of and what kind of jobs they do on a day-to-day -day basis again i think this is amazing and if you are new to my channel you will see that i do make videos now and again called day in a life of a researcher and i kind of show you around snippets of what i do so i guess if you guys aren't able to access those maybe those videos would be kind of informative for you um, but if you are in that area, then that's a really amazing thing to go for. Anyway, the next placement I found is something called Into Science uh, UK and it says that this is an institute that organises up to two weeks of science, technology, engineering and maths internships for year 12 students during the summer holiday. Honestly, like where were these when I was in school? In fact, they were probably around just my school wasn't great at communicating these. Also, I didn't live in Suffolk. Okay, I'm gonna stop being sassy now. Anyway, so the good thing about this one particularly, it says that there are approximately 100 placements offered through the program every year, which is quite a lot, because usually things like this don't take on that many students. Um, so another good thing to consider, and links below. And lastly, this is something I've definitely not heard of, and it's so, I didn't even know something like this existed. But basically there is a section that again I'll link below, be, below, below and it's called uh, pharmaceutical recruiters. Now not all but some pharmaceutical companies can offer one to two week placements for 16 to 18 year olds. These are during the school holidays but what the website says is that these are very rarely advertised and I assume because they will be in really high demand. And what the website actually does recommend is for you, to, for you guys to ring up and just ask and inquire about them. Again, I feel for you if you hate speaking on the phone, but I feel like it's a bit of a necessary evil. So, number three on the list of work experience opportunities that you can do for biomedical sciences is something called a Crest Award. Now, you may already be familiar with this through your school, but basically what it is, is, oh, as it says here, the Crest Award scheme is the British Science Association's flagship program for young people providing science enrichment activities to inspire and engage those aged between five, uh, 5 to 19 years old. So basically it's a program that allows you to participate in a lot of science activities and projects and I think this is something that's very often run in schools and clubs but I think you can do it at home as well. So again I will link that below. This is something that I did hear in my school because I was in a science club. Surprise surprise right? I'm, I, I may not appear geeky but I'm quite possibly one of the biggest science geeks you'll ever meet. So in science club is where they introduced us to um, the Crest Awards, but I don't think, I'm not sure why I didn't do one, but I think I had a reason because I was considering it. Anyway, number four on the list of things that you can do for work experience is contact universities. I know, more phone calls. Or if you have, for example, an older sibling or cousin, or if you have a member of your family that works with an university, you could ask them to speak to students who work in the labs and just ask if you can go and shadow one of them. I know this is again a bit difficult because I know that not everybody has the resources or has like the contacts to be able to do so. And if you don't, you know, it doesn't harm anybody to just give a call and ask. If you don't ask, you don't get. And actually, last week sometime, a friend of mine asked me if a 17 year old who he knew could come and shadow me in the labs for just an afternoon. And bearing in mind, I'm only a master's student. It's not like I'm, you know, doing some kind of amazing research. But even just for the afternoon, um, I got him to do a little bit of cell culture and just introduced him to a little bit of my research and like let him see my cells under the microscope. And you know what, if you're somebody who's really passionate about that, even having just a couple of hours of that kind of experience could be really amazing. I know I certainly would have loved something like that when I was 17. So yes, worth an ask. So number five is contacting your local pharmacies and asking if you can just shadow the pharmacist and see what a typical day of a pharmacist looks like. Unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because not everybody has this access, but if you have contacts, use them. And if you don't, you know what? Nothing beats a friendly face and just a 
happy approach. You can just go to the counter and ask, you know, I'm 17, 16, whatever, I would like to do this at university. Is it possible for me to shadow you for just one day? They might say yes, and if they do, fantastic. And if they don't, well, you can try again later. But, you know, just bear in mind that people are quite busy. So, you know, don't take it personally, but it's worth a try anyway. So I know the things that I've mentioned so far can be in a way quite difficult and competitive to acquire, but the next three things anyone can do. So number six is do some kind of tutoring work with primary school kids. And you can do this in science or maths or technology or something in, you know, the whole STEM department. STEM is uh, science, technology, engineering, maths, by the way, in case you weren't sure. And I remember this is something I did when I was in sixth form and I was tutoring a year six student for 10 or 12 weeks, something like that, in her maths. And not only is it amazing for you to help a student, but again, it looks, it looks good on your personal statement because it shows that you're proactive in academia and also in your community. Number seven, and again, this is something I did, is volunteer in your secondary school's um, lab and work with the technicians who prepare all of the science experiments. So obviously a teacher doesn't plan out all of the experiments that she's going to do with like a class of 20 to 30 people. There are often lab technicians who make up solutions, test all the equipment, you know, prep everything, put everything together. And you can literally say, is it okay if I come and help you with this? And you know what, if anything, they would love that because you are giving them a helping hand and by doing so, it's a really, really easy way for you to just get really basic experience of, you know, a lab technician's job. Number eight, and I'm sure this is gonna put a lot of you at ease, is to literally do any kind of work experience or volunteer work outside of school. So I'm talking about things like working in charity shops, nurseries, I don't know, dog walking, doing fundraisers, um, getting a part-time job, anything like that. The thing is guys, for biomedical sciences, the admissions tutors often look for people who are just, you know, proactive. You don't necessarily have to have like months or weeks of experience in the lab because honestly, with this course, so many people apply and they have no experience at all. Maybe they play football on like a Thursday afternoon or I don't know, maybe they do some art in their spare time or something like that. But as I said, unlike medicine for biomed, it isn't expected of you to have any of this. But if you do, maybe it's just that tiny bit of advantage for the really high ranking schools. And you know what, if there is something I have missed out that you guys are doing, put it below because I'm sure other students might see it and it might help them out. And if this video helped you out, then do give it a thumbs up because it would help me out a lot and I would really appreciate your support. Okay guys, I am going to stop filming now because it was really hot, so I'm gonna go and sit in front of my fan for a bit. So, I hope you're all having an amazing day and until next time, take care and I'll see you later.